never seen anything like this. Look at how beautiful this is. We've just made it to the historic town of Tin Cup. We've got a problem here. Hey there and welcome back. Today we have another Land Rover adventure for you. It is 35 years since the Land Rover's Great Divide expedition. The expedition started at the northern border of Colorado with Wyoming and went all the way to the southern border. Some of the trails that they were on are no longer accessible today, so we will not be doing all of them, but we will be spending a week on the trails trying to do as much of the original route as possible within a week. This is my Defender Trophy 90, of course. And then Lucky 8 brought their brand new 130 with a trailer with a rooftop tent on it then we have three defender 110s and another brand new defender 130 with us the original expedition consisted of the classic range rovers as well as one defender in the back used as a support vehicle We've just started Buffalo Pass. The views here are pretty amazing. I love these skinny, tall pine trees that are everywhere. Funny thing is the road here is much smoother than the trail that we took to get to this pass road. Now we have just left Buffalo Pass and we are on one of the fire roads connecting up to the next pass that we are going to drive. These might not be difficult roads to drive on, but the views are worth it. We have the trails mapped out on our GPS systems, but it seems like they are deviating from what it says the trail is supposed to be. And we're a little lost right now, trying to figure out where exactly this trail goes. So this is where we are right now. It doesn't even look like a trail they're on now. Someone already drove down this one. I'm on another trail. The road that they're on up there, we went down there turned around because it didn't look right. Can't complain about getting lost in this kind of landscape though. Yeah. We're still not sure where we're going. There is another little trail that comes off yeah, here. Then in the distance, you can see it goes up that hill. We're going down to scout that trail now. We have another person going back to scout another trail looks like we have chosen a trail we'll see where this goes over there is where i thought the trail was going but it's actually turned to the left and gone down here the weeds in the middle of the road you can hear them scraping on the underside of my vehicle Well, it turns out we're still lost. The trail that goes up there, probably the one that we wanted. Yeah, right there. Wow, cool. 
Super cool. This whole hill is just covered in dead trees. I've never seen anything like this before. Just about finished with our lunch. Then we're gonna get back on the trail. Now we're gonna be entering Stillwater Pass. Hey. Amazing how big some of these boulders that are just hanging, looks like by a thread up there. That came down, that would weigh many times what my defender weighs. This is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. It's kind of nice that they're dead though. Right now we can see through them. If they were alive, it'd just be a wall of trees. We wouldn't even see the peaks over there. We've been making pretty good time today, especially since even though we got lost, we did take a faster route than the entire route that we were supposed to be taking. I think our campground is going to be somewhere on this lake. We are at the fuel station right now, but apparently there is a big rain coming and the rain could start any minute. Starting to sprinkle, so here comes the rain. We are not at the campsite yet. I guess if it gets real bad, I might just consider sleeping in the truck. But this is how these adventures go. You take what you get and you just roll with the punches. I guess this is it, the Stillwater Campground. Here's our campground for tonight. Each of us have just this little space. Actually, it's a pretty big space. We all have our own picnic tables, our own fire pits, our own place to park. And then look at that view. It's just starting to rain now. Just finished getting my tent up. It's pretty gorgeous, but I wish the weather was better. So next morning, this is the view from our campsite. I think it got down to 34 degrees last night. As you can hear, one of the neighbors fired up their generator just before 6 a.m. We're going to get packed up and then we're going to hit the road.
We've all stopped for lunch now. Can't say that this is a bad place to pull off on the side of the road and have a lunch. I think we're driving down the final road to our campground now. We are going to be going to some dispersed camping sites. We are not camping at a commercial campground tonight. And there are no reservations, so it's first come first serve. So we'll just have to see if there's any open when we get there. Well, just like yesterday, we have the rain coming in right as we need to set up our campsite. The road has turned completely to dirt now. Looks like we're getting up to our campground. All right, this is where we're camping at. We saw signs when we pulled in. This is a bear area. So we'll have to watch out about our food storage where, that we're not attracting bears to the cars. So we're here in the sound of water. We're gonna go investigate what the, where it's coming from. Wow, look at that, the river is orange. Brocks. That's crazy. I've never seen a river this color before. This little stream. The water is really moving. Nice little pool over here. This is literally just feet from our campsite. Really neat. Following that creek a little bit further. Looks like there's a dam just up there. I'm just following it a little bit longer. This is one of the best campsites that I've ever seen. Basically have the whole valley to ourselves.
Well, we pulled into camp. We have everything set up. We are staying at the Hall Valley Campground. This is the exact campground that the original expedition stayed in. So this is a pretty historic place. There isn't anybody else here, so we basically have this whole valley to ourselves. And the views here are just stunning. Well, good morning. It is the morning of day three of our Great Divide expedition. Everyone is just getting up now and we're waiting for the sun to peak over the mountain. This is the view that I have in front of me right now. My tent was right over here. We have this open plain and the trees, the mountains in the background. And also, I don't know if you can hear it, but we've been hearing the rushing water of that creek the entire night. That's pretty much the only thing that I heard, except at one point a rodent or some small animal was rustling some leaves around my tent. But it's just beautiful here. Looking at the map, we are supposed to be driving Mosquito Pass today, but the pass is closed, so we are going to have to take a bypass, which is unfortunate because that is the tallest through road in the United States. We are running into a lot of closed roads. Even though we are doing this expedition in July, the snow has not melted from a lot of the mountain peaks, and those passes are just closed and off limits to everybody. You can see right now I'm at 9,828 feet. And I think it got down to about 36 degrees last night. The pass we're traveling on right now used to be an old stagecoach road. Then it was converted into a railroad until like the 1930s. There are still some remnants of the railroad here, and hopefully we can stop and check them out. So and here we go. They even have a bit of the old rail line here. Here's the water tower for the train tracks. That is a huge water tank. All right, we're about to enter Shrine Pass. This is a pretty interesting sign. I've never seen this sign before. Five, it's doable. Five is, yeah. Yeah, doable. But it's going to be more difficult. We can see why they're so difficult. Can we get further? Oh, we can see, shell. We can see the rocks here. We're turning around for like the fifth time on this leg of the trip. You can see. The road is closed down there. There's so many much construction and so many road closures that we don't really know how to get to where we're going right now. We've been going on this road for about 20 minutes now. I've been told that we're only halfway there. So I'm hoping for a really spectacular view when we get to the top or to wherever we're going.
Look at how beautiful this is. Yeah. Not another person in sight besides us. I don't know how long we've been on this trail, but it feels like we've been on this trail for an hour now. It's probably been another 20 minutes and we are still going. The train keeps changing. We're going from forests to tops of valleys like this right here. I cannot wait to get to where we're going and get out of this car. Situation is, we're still going. We are still going. It's starting to get dark now. Coming down into some valley or basin. Hopefully that's where we're stopping for tonight. I think I just heard some thunder. Looks like it's raining over there. It looks like rain over there, but Look at this valley, this is amazing. We just found a blacktop road. We're about two miles from the campsite now. Apparently we took the hard way getting here. All right, this is the campground. We have a private group campground. So there's plenty of spots to choose from. We're all just going to pick a spot and park and set up camp. Every time we shut one of our doors, the dust just comes flying off the vehicles. This is the Chapman Group Campground where the original expedition stayed at. It holds 60 people, but we only have eight. So we have the whole place to ourselves. So there's horseshoes, big bonfire, they have a ladder to get up on that rock. Good morning, it is day four of the Great Divide Expedition. We had this amazing campsite last night. Everyone parked over here in the trees, but behind me is this big valley that we also could have camped in. We have a bunch of campsites that we have here. I think everyone wanted to be closer to the bathrooms, which are over there. But this was also open for us to camp in. We had reserved this entire section pretty amazing view here. Right now I'm here with Patty and she did all the research on the original expedition and plotted our routes for this entire week. So let's talk with her and hear what she went through to make that happen. Hi, I'm Patty Rockwell. I'm from upstate New York in Himrod. Probably no one's ever heard of it, but if you know where Watkins Glen is, that's where we live. Um, about a year and a half ago, after we finished our trip last year, we were talking about um, wanting to come back to Colorado and to drive the Continental Divide from the north to the south. And so the route that we, it was hard to find the exact uh, route. And so I looked online and searched for a long, long time and finally found the route that they took in the 90s with the classics and started to plot it out. And obviously there's some changes, things like Rollins Pass is now a west only or a east only pass. Um, and then we were also a little dependent on, you know, the weather. So this year we were hoping to do Mosquito, Mosquito and Hagerman's, um, but Mosquito was still closed due to the heavy snow um, that they had this past year. So we've had a great trip so far and um, the research that I did um, got us real close. So we've been enjoying it at bare minimum, a bunch of passes and the campgrounds where folks stayed. And it is really cool to roll into a campground and think about um, you know, these folks who were doing it in the 90s uh, in the classics, it's, uh, it's a nice uh, touch point for history.
We've just made it to the historic town of Tin Cup. And we have a little treat that we're going to go visit while we're here. We are now at the Mountain Cemetery near Tin Cup. And we're making this stop because the original expedition also stopped here. And that's because they had a very special person on their expedition. Near the town of Tin Cup, the expedition paused at a mountain cemetery so that one of the members of the expedition, journalist Denise McCluggage, could visit the grave of her great-grandmother. Denise McCluggage, famous race car driver, journalist, photographer, as well as activist, was on the trip, and her great-grandmother is buried here. She was able to find her grave, and everyone came to have a look, and so we are also stopping here at this mountain cemetery to see if we can find it. There's signs all around here that have different religions on them, so they must have buried different religions on different hills. And here it is. This is Abby's grave. This is the great-grandmother of Denise McCluggage. Daddy used to come up here, I guess, when he was like seven years old. That must have been 1897, 98, something like that. And uh, come over St. Elmo Pass, drawn by horses. If the horse got loose, you know, it would hold the great team. And if one started slipping over the side, they just cut it loose and let it go. Otherwise, it pulled the wagons over. <laughs> I don't know whether he was telling the truth or not, that we were wide-eyed. She, of course, is a famous race car driver that started out racing her MGTC and then started racing professionally with her Jaguar XK140. She then moved on to racing a Ferrari at Sebring, as well as racing many other cars, including Maseratis. We made a stop at the Taylor Park Trading Post. It's the only gas station around. There's only one pump. It's taking a while for all of us to get through it, but it's really the only choice we have. Right now we are at the trailhead of Tin Cup Pass. Everyone has stopped for lunch and then we will hit the trail. We've got a problem here. The road actually goes through this water and there's a ditch on both sides. So if you go off either side too much and there's nothing to indicate where it is, you can fall in just like we have one defender that has fallen in like that right now. So he's backing up and he's going to hook up a tow rope and try to pull him out of there.
another defender has pulled up behind him, but he might be going to try to pull his back end up. Colorado 4x4 rescue and recovery was here if we had needed them. We've got everything pulled out, just letting the defender dry out a little bit. Everything looks to be okay. And check out this view at our parking spot. All right, here's an update. The Land Rover, we're drying out the computers. We're not sure if it's going to run and get out of here. We're gonna get it out of here some way. But we're going to go back the way we came, which means we have to do three or four water crossings, including the one that was the big issue. Sun's starting to go down, so we're probably going to have to start to get this solved pretty quickly. Starting to get darker now. We're still sitting here trying to dry out computers. Well, here comes the rain and we're still sitting here. We do need to go soon. I guess I finally get to use this. It's pretty small, but it's better than nothing. So a couple of the defenders went back across and they are waiting over there. So we have a couple defenders still here as backup in case something goes wrong. I think I'm going to be tail. I'll be the last one out. The defender is able to run long enough. We're gonna try to back it up. And when we need to, we'll pull it across the water.
but turns out that defender is running so they just drove it through all the water crossings and they're driving it up the trail so i'm back here with one of the other defenders we're just taking up the tail and we're all going to meet up when everybody gets up to the trailhead we're back on the road now everything seems to be okay Hopefully we can run the air conditioning, get that Defender dried up even more, and everything will be just okay with it. Well, it looks like this is where this adventure is going to end. Uh, everyone wants to just go get a hotel, so I'm just going to break off from this group. They're all going to New York. I'm going to go back to Iowa. Unfortunately, we were planning to stay one extra day and do some extra bonus trails with a couple other defenders that aren't on the trip right now, but that has been canceled. So I'm gonna hit the road and I'll see you next time.